uh, do you support the I-495, I-270 expansion project, which touches tangentially on District 6 on 495? So thank you for that question. Um, I, I want to say at the outset that I think that we have an urgency to make sure that our policies are environmentally sound. At the same time, though, I am pragmatic and I sit in the same traffic as everybody else. And one of the things that I've, I've said publicly is, you know, we've already invested, we've, we've, we've made the studies um, and we need to fix that infrastructure anyway. So I'm open to the, the you know, the, the different technology that exists. Um, and if, if expansion, you know, you know, makes the most sense, I'm open to that discussion. What I don't like to see is, is years and years of, you know, taxpayers dollars, you know, studying, because that's waste as well. So I think, you know, while there, I think there is an opportunity to be environmentally um, sound about our infrastructure, but that there, that there's a need there's definitely a need to do something about the traffic in our in our in our areas, and if ex expansion is one of the tools, I'm open to that discussion. I'm not saying that that, that that's the only thing I want to do. Definitely want to continue the mass transit um, investment. Um, and one of the things that you know that that I think is is a, you know I want to I want to stop this idea that people need to travel an hour away to go to go to work. And I think you know young people and entrepreneurs and innovative thinkers, they know that, they get it. So we should be creating job centers here so that we rely less on roads and, and, and rely less on expansion, but that we're, that we're investing in, in tools like, BR, like BRT um, and, you know, and, and, and walkable communities. Thank you for the question. So how do, attract, how do, you, how do you plan to attract businesses to Wheaton, to Forest Glen? to Aspen Hill, areas of District 6, how can we make this a more business-oriented community in your, in, your, in your ideas? Yeah, so the, the, the good news is that uh, the infrastructure is here, right? We have, we're right here in the uh, Wheaton Urban District, but my, my apartment is actually right by, right by the mall. And so looking at you know, how our businesses have been, um, have been impacted by the pandemic, you know, survey the business owners themselves and they'll tell you, you know, they're um, for, for, for different reasons, you know, the pricing on uh, just, the, just the, the different supplies that they use um, has definitely had an impact on, you know, in, on their services and, and being able to um, offer, you know, or, or manufacture the products and services that they're offering. So first of all, we need, we need to remedy the, the losses that our current business owners have, have been experiencing. And then also, and also looking at how, you know, improving their experiences with the county, um, you know, how can we improve um, the resource, like the, the resources are, sometimes they're there, but they're not accessible. Um, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, um, you know, language barrier is an issue. Um, when you go to the website, you know, the information is not read, readily available. Uh, we don't have navig small business navigators that have the the language the language skills that we need. So you know, I think the infrastructure is is there. Uh, we have the we have the um, uh, economic development corporation uh, right here in Montgomery County. I think it's a it's a great start. Um, however, you know, I think that we need to really be looking at um, who are the folks that are being left behind, the folks that are ready to take risks. And, and they're ready to, to make the investment, what are the things that they're really having um, difficulty reaching? I would say, uh, you know, just capital, capital, you know, for startups, um, you know, folks with tax ID numbers that may not have a social security number, they don't, they don't have access to loans. Um, they don't, they can't even build credit. So, you know, I think Montgomery County, I think there's an appetite in Montgomery County, not just the appetite, but the expertise to look at how we can, um, use some of these federal funds and, and state uh, funds in, in terms of the stimuluses that we're gonna be receiving as we're transitioning out of the pandemic. So let's invest in nonprofits um, that, can, that can bridge that gap for so many of our, you know, of our neighbors. Because let's face it, a lot of folks that, folks, you know, that may be undocumented, they're able to take out a, a tax ID number, but what are they gonna do if they don't have access to capital and they can't build credit? 
So those are some of the issues um, that, you know, that are near and dear to my heart. And that, and that I learned from the experts like you. You know, I, as, as, a, as a council member, as a legislator, we're not experts, we're generalists. But like what I, my commitment and my pledge to you and your membership is that, you know, I, I am never the smartest person in the room. My way of working is how can I be a resource to you? What are the things that the county needs to be doing better? Um, and just basically, you know, having an open door policy. Anybody who gets to know me knows I, you know, I'm a very open person um, and I'm always looking to learn from the experts. Thank you for the question.